Welcome to another episode of Decoding Project 2025, a special project of the Taking Down Trump podcast. I'm your host, Tristan Snell. We left off about halfway through Project 2025's section on the Department of Health and Human Services, really getting into the weeds of the horrifying things that they're going to be doing to healthcare. We know about the things about reproductive rights, but then there's so much more here that's going to directly impact access to care and the cost of care. Things like we were talking about last time, the cost of prescription drugs is going to be going up, guaranteed, with Donald Trump and Project 2025 if he were to get reelected. But there's a lot more here. Let's just dive right in. Not surprisingly, they always want to do this on the far right. They want to cut off care for Medicaid recipients. So Medicaid, for those of you who don't know, is the part of the federal government that helps with health care for low-income Americans. So cutting off care to the poorest folks, the folks who need help the most, okay? And this comes from folks, a lot of them here, there's a, there's a part down a little bit for, further here, that actually down at page 481, where they refer to in this, in this document a biblically-based definition of marriage and family. That's a direct quote. Biblically-based definition of marriage and family. I don't know what the heck Bible these people have read or have in their homes, but the one that I've got, the one that I read personally, doesn't actually say that you're supposed to cut off health care for the poorest among us. In fact, I'm pretty sure it says the exact opposite and that healing the sick who can't afford it and are desperate might actually be the greatest thing you can do. I think if you just clock the number of acts that Jesus undertakes in the Gospels, I think that most of the things had to do with healing people who could not turn anywhere else. It is literally the thing that Jesus did the most of in the Gospels. But go ahead and cut off care for Medicaid recipients and then turn around and try to tell me that you're a Christian. Go ahead. I'll wait. That's a fun one. Uh, But let's just keep moving. Uh, They want to kill off some of the things, something that we got that was a great reform in recent years called the No Surprises Act that did just a bit of work. There's a lot more that we need to do to bring greater transparency to medical billing and to help reduce the crushing load of medical debt on American families. They want to get rid of that and let providers bill patients however and however much they want. So that's fun. Uh, Again, probably not surprising. Uh, But here's where we really get a, a one that I wasn't expecting we would still see from them. They want to, this is on page 470, they want to circumvent the Affordable Care Act prohibition on discriminating against pre-existing conditions. We all know what this is, I think, right? This is them, again, attempting to kill or gut the ACA, Obamacare. The ban against denying coverage for pre-existing conditions was one of the most important and popular reforms that the ACA brought about. Do we want to go back to the bad old days where having a condition like diabetes would prevent somebody from being able to get insurance? Because that's what used to happen before the ACA. And now insurers cannot do that. The far right, Donald Trump, they still want to make that change. They are still trying to get rid of the ACA after all this time. All Donald Trump, all Donald Trump has is concepts of a plan, which is obviously he got caught out by the moderators in the debate last week trying to say that he had something to replace the ACA. He doesn't. They don't want to replace it. They just want to go back. They want to take Americans and throw us all to the wolves. Okay. They don't want us to be taken care of. They want us to be taken advantage of. And there's a difference, and that's a choice that we make as a country. Are we going to take care of people, or are we going to take advantage of people? That's what this is really all about. So we need to really pay attention to what they're saying here, because Donald Trump's standing up there at the 
on the debate stage and in interviews and he's saying things about how he supports the ACA that he's, he's claiming he helped save it. He tried to get rid of it 60 times during his first term, 60 times. The only reason that we haven't seen more Republican attempts to get rid of it lately have been because they're not in power as much. They only have the house. They don't have the Senate. They don't have the white house. So they haven't been able to do as much damage. If they get back in, they're going to keep on trying to get rid of the ACA. And if you or a loved one have a pre-existing condition, this should be an alarm bell. This should be a wake-up call. We need to do something to stop this from happening. Again, a lot of these health issues, in my view, should be bipartisan issues. Disease does not know a party. Disease does not know an ideology. We need to take care of people. And you can't take care of people if you're finding ways to screw them. And that's the difference. And it's not, there's not a lot of gray area there. Maybe there is some place, but a lot of these things are very, very, very cut and dry. They're very black and white. Again, you can either take care of people or you can take advantage of people. They want to cut funding for women to travel for critical care. That's, again, not surprising given a lot of these things that we're seeing, but that's on page 471. They want to kill the vaccine mandate at hospitals. And get this, they want to pay reparations, and they dare to use that word. They want to pay reparations to anti-vaxxers who lost their jobs in healthcare for not getting an inoculation, for not getting a vaccination as their jobs require and as was considered medically necessary by literally everybody in the medical establishment, okay? And that saved millions of lives, mind you. We lost over a million Americans because of COVID. We had a higher death rate than pretty much any advanced country by far. And we would have lost a couple million more if we hadn't had that vaccine roll out the way that we did. And they want to take the folks who tried to get in the way of that they want to take the folks who would have let those millions of people additional die, and they want to give them a freaking medal. They want to give them money. They want to pay our taxpayer money to pay these people for reading something on the internet and then doing something that got them fired at their job. Okay, something that's core to their job about actually not harming people, right? That's the beginning of the Hippocratic Oath. Do no harm. Yeah, that's the thing that healthcare folks have to live by. You're doing harm if you've turned yourself into a walking cesspool of disease because you haven't bothered to get vaccinated. You're not only doing yourself harm, you're doing your family harm, you're doing your community harm. We don't need to go into all of this, but these were healthcare workers. So now you go into any doctor's office, any hospital, and you've got the confidence that you're being seen by folks that have actually been vaccinated. And then back to the wonderful things that they want to do in this document for, say, parents and families, children. They want to kill Head Start because, you know, that's definitely pro-life and pro-family. You know, life for them begins at conception and ends at birth. And if it hasn't ended at that point, it'll end in a school shooting. And in the meantime, let's just make sure that they end any chance for any of these kids to get a good start in life by ending educational opportunities, making sure that they're starving instead of well-fed, all of those things. But yeah, let's just take the thing that has helped millions of American children do better before they get to school, disadvantaged folks coming from disadvantaged families, and let's just get rid of that, you know, because, you know, that's pro-life, right? Every, we can all agree on that, right? That's pro-family. They talk about wanting to help have a pro-family agenda to encourage more people to have more kids so that they can starve and not have educational opportunities. Yeah, that makes sense. If you read all of that together, it almost sounds like they want to turn women into breeders to create a more low-income workforce that'll be cheaper and more docile. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. Uh, they want to allow religious discrimination and coverage for contraception. So they want to basically say, oh, great, uh, there, we won't have health care coverage at our workplace for the pill if we have just decided that we want to uh, 
claim that we have religious convictions that probably aren't, that are really political convictions that are being cloaked in religion, and then say we're going to stop providing health care for our employees. That's just, you know, that's a wonderful thing. But that, uh, you know, that does it for, for, for HHS. We're going to move on to the Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD. This is another one of these times where I just feel compelled to note that Project 2025 was brought to you by the very people who ran the first Trump administration, including Ben Carson, who was the secretary of the Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD. He was the cabinet secretary. And wait, look at this. Who is the author of the section in Project 2025 on HUD? It's Ben Carson. I've heard that name before. He of the missing luggage. That guy. All of the other crazy things about him. But there's this section's not as terrifying, not as dystopic. It's bad still. But I but I really dwell here for a moment to point out that like the notion that this somehow isn't Donald Trump's document is just absolutely batshit. Okay. Ben Carson ran the department and then he's writing the blueprint for how he's going to run the department in a second term. This is a complete continuation of what they were doing the first time and what they want to do now. It is unmistakable. Donald Trump rode a private plane with the head of the Heritage Foundation so he could go to a dinner to honor the Heritage Foundation at which Trump was the keynote and in which he said, as you probably have seen the video, that he was thanking them for all of the work that they were doing to further his agenda. Just because he didn't say the words Project 2025 doesn't mean that that's not what he was doing. This has been an institution, mind you, for a very long time in Republican politics. They did this the first time in 1980 for Reagan. And they've been doing it every four years ever since and handing it to any new incoming Republican president. So this is not a new thing. And it's not somehow by some grassroots organization that has no connections to the halls of power. This is something that was very much literally handed to incoming presidents and their senior staff, written by, a lot of times, the very same senior staff members. Okay, just because Donald Trump didn't write this section and that Ben Carson did doesn't mean that it's not Donald Trump's document. We know what it would look like if Donald Trump wrote it. It would look like his truth social posts, and it wouldn't have as much policy in it. It would just have a lot of ranting in all caps. So they had Ben Carson or somebody working for Ben Carson write this section. But we'll just keep going. Once again, they talk about a cadre of political appointees. I love that word, though, because it starts to get a little bit closer to what they're really doing here. Cabal would be an even better word. It's also a fun word to get to use in a sentence. But they want to have a Trump cabal, a cadre, you can call it that too, with a bunch of political appointees, most of whom will have no subject matter expertise, no domain expertise, no knowledge about the areas that they're purporting to regulate. And they want to get those people in there without Senate approval so that they can start wrecking the federal government from day one and damn Congress. Don't care. They're just going to bypass Congress entirely. Uh, we have some a language in here where they talk about rethinking and reimagining. You know, whenever they start talking about that or, or engaging in analysis about the future of the department, that means that they are going to uh, conduct a study that will recommend the abolition of that department. So on 504, we can clearly see that yet again, because the Republicans have been trying to do this for a long time, they want to get rid of the Department of Housing and Urban Development because God forbid we would want to have uh, any help in that area of America. Uh, they want to shift all power to Trump cronies and away from career officials who actually know what they're doing. Uh, and then, of course, they're, what they're going to want to do here is to make sure that they're privatizing anything they can. What are they really doing here? This is yet another area in which this is really key. The last thing they want is more public built housing because that is something that competes with private developers like Donald Trump. Actually, Donald Trump hasn't developed anything in a very long time now. He just sticks his name on things in exchange for licensing fees. But Donald Trump's father, Fred Trump, made his fortune with federal subsidies to build housing units in Brooklyn and Queens. Donald Trump, however, 
at the margins in some of these instances was thereby kind of competing with the federal government actually directly building these units in New York City, directly building these units. Private developers would prefer if the federal government and states and localities built no units of housing, never mind the housing shortage that we have in this country. Never mind that we should be looking for any solutions to get more housing units built, whether they are public or private or public-private partnerships, as we were talking about last time, anything in between. But they want to, that's why they want to get rid of HUD. They don't want the federal government being in the business of housing and urban development because they want to pocket all of the money from development for themselves rather than having any of it flow through the federal government or having the federal government have any power or authority or sway in this area at all. That's what this is. It's a power play. They want to basically beat down any competition. It's why they also want to get rid of Medicare. It's why they want to get rid of Social Security. It's why they want to get rid of public schools. It's why they'd like to privatize the military if they could, if they could, pull, if they could pull that off. They would if they could, if they had the power. That's why they're doing all of this. Again, it's the Kremlinization of America turning American public agencies into private fiefdoms to benefit a new generation of American oligarchs. That's what they want. But let's keep going. We get to one of my more favorite things in all of this. They actually want to prohibit non-citizens, including all mixed status families, from living in all federally assisted housing. God, what do we do with this? Let's just unpack it, okay? Mixed status families. So that means if you've got a family that's got some folks who are not citizens and you've got other folks who are. Uh, mind you, that could also then include some non-citizens who are green card holders or have some other temporary visa, green cards, a permanent visa. Uh, so you could have folks that have all legal immigration statuses and one citizen or not, but folks who are illegal immigrants, et cetera, et cetera, and none of them would be able to live in federally assisted housing. Now, what does that mean? That's not just oh, the federal government built this. It's also, there are vouchers that happen in different federal programs or subsidies that were given to the builder in the first place. You can look these things up at section eight and section nine. There's a whole lot of different programs that HUD, that HUD administers. That covers a huge swath of housing throughout the country. It's not just what you think about if you think about public housing. There's a lot of federally assisted housing. That's a very carefully picked term by Mr. Carson here, Dr. Carson here. I guess we still have to call him a doctor. So you've got here basically a way to completely, completely wreck the lives of potentially, this is hundreds of thousands, if not millions of legal immigrants are going to be pushed out of their housing. Probably, I mean, this would make it sound like they're going to get evicted. So this would be mass evictions and not for undocumented immigrants. It doesn't say that. It's kicking all non-citizens out of this housing. I'm going to do some more research into this to see how many units of housing this would be. And a lot of times this housing that is, you know, low to middle income housing does have a lot of folks who are immigrants in it. These are folks who left their countries to get a better life here in America. And we're talking about ones that then that would fall under this umbrella that did it legally. They did everything the right way as the right wing folks are constantly harping. They just, you know, they'll, they'll try to say, oh, we don't care about immigrants as long as they come in the right way. That is absolute and utter bullshit. And this proves it. They want all immigrants legal and undocumented to suffer, to be removed from the definition of America and what it means to be an American and the American dream. That's what they want. So this is, along with the mass deportations that they want to do, this would be mass evictions for an untold number of American families. This is absolutely horrifying to see here. So, you know, Dr. Carson, with his mild-mannered 
demeanor and everything like that. You know, that's just a, a front for apparently just he he got to have his own little dollop of fascism in his section of the document. Uh, but let's just make sure to, you know, keep America for the Americans is I think what they, what they really would love to be able to say, you know, but they're, and, and they do on, on the more right-wing message boards, but that's what, that's what Donald Trump is really, really trying to do in his campaign, in his movement, in MAGA, in QAnon, in project 2025. This is nothing less than creating some sort of racial apartheid situation in America right? That's what they're doing here. They want to basically take folks that have any immigration status at all and completely wipe them off the map of what it means to be America. That's what they, that, that's what they want. Make no mistake about it. That is what this election in part is about. It is what their whole movement is about. This is very much a racially, ethnically, xenophobically driven movement and document. And we see it right here. Then we move on to the Department of Interior to shift focus briefly. Uh, so Interior runs a whole lot of things like national parks, national forests. A lot of our natural resources are, are run out of the Interior Department, among very many other things. There are uh, There's a lot of standard right-wing language here, but just the driving force of this is that they don't see our natural treasures as being the thing that interior protects. They see all of that land and, and purple mountains majesty as a place where they can go and drill and mine. They don't care about the beauty of it, or let's just be clear. I'm not just trying to be pie in the sky here and not talk about economic benefit. There's a lot of money in protecting these green spaces and these mountains and these rivers, because the recreational value of these things is massive. Go talk to any community that has managed to actually build big cottage industries around the fact that they are near a major park or a major wilderness area, because the number of people who go to visit these places has been going through the roof. It started during COVID and it shows no signs of abating. And it's a really wonderful, beautiful thing. So this is actually about green spaces and about green period. But no, 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 no. Let's just treat all of that as a place where fossil fuels live and we're going to strip mine that mountain. We're going to cut down that forest and we're going to pollute that river. That's what we're going to do. It's not about wilderness or nature or parks. And, you know, you get more specific things around page 523. They talk about vastly expanded drilling in Alaska. Uh, and then page 532, where they talk about cutting protection for national monuments. So there are a number of places that are not suitable to be made into parkland. A lot of it is because they're so wild that there's not actually a great place to then put in roads or lodges or campgrounds, anything like that. But they wanted to protect that beautiful place. Uh, and they thereby declared it a national monument to protect that. And that gives it a federal designation. You can't build on it. You can't mine there are some ways that that can be done, but it's very, very restricted. Okay. So that has happened a lot more in recent years as we've been trying to protect more and more of our precious national heritage because it's a big part of what makes America, America. And again, I think this is a bipartisan issue. I don't think that only liberals are running around and going to national parks and get misty eyed thinking about some of the beautiful places that we have in our wonderful country. Okay. I think that, uh, I think the conservatives really care about those things too. Okay. And they're going to tear them up. What they really want to do here is not to put, again, the whole thing about it even being America first is garbage. They don't want to put America first. The things that really matter about America, our communities, our families, taking care of one another, taking care of the sick, taking care of our veterans when they come home, promoting democracy both here and abroad, having opportunities for all of us, and also our natural heritage, our mountains, our rivers. These are things that we care about more than anything else. That is what the flag stands for, for so many of us. And these are things that these folks, these Project 2025 folks led by Donald Trump, 
They don't care about those things. It's just a marketing slogan. Let's just be really clear about this. This is a con from a well-known and documented and prosecuted con artist. It's not about making America great. It's not about America first. What they want to do is if they, look, I'm telling you, if they found any kind of minerals or oil at the Grand Canyon, they would bulldoze the whole goddamn thing tomorrow. If they found coal underneath Mount Rushmore, they would get rid of Mount Rushmore. That's what these people would do. They don't care about America. The only thing they care about America is about making American dollars. They care about making a buck. That's the only thing that they care about. They don't care about America. They certainly don't care about you. But the people who wrote this document, these senior officials for Trump, Donald Trump, the Heritage Foundation, none of these people care about America. None of these people care about you. They care about making money and about placating certain voting interests so that they can get into power so that they can make money. That's the whole thing. So every single bit of this document is driven by that. They don't care about protecting America's treasured legacy. They care about ripping it up. If it made a single buck for them, they would tear all of it apart. Guaranteed. And it's plain as day from reading this. So that's our show for today. We're going to pick up with the Department of Justice tomorrow. Yes, it looks like we're going in alphabetical order here as we work our way through the rest of this document. We are more than halfway done. If you're really liking these, follow this podcast so that you automatically get all of the episodes of Decoding Project 2025 and all of the other episodes of Taking Down Trump with a lot of our amazing special guests who are coming soon, a number of members of Congress who are going to be coming soon uh, to, to come by and uh, talk with me on the show. All of this will be yours on your device automatically if you follow the podcast then you don't have to think about it. Uh, also make sure that you follow me on Twitter and subscribe to the Substack. That is free and you'll always get all of the latest from me, including the written essay pieces that I'm doing to accompany this podcast series on Decoding Project 2025. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time.